New Zealand, a first world country, member of the OECD, yet internationally one of the worst for road crash fatalities. On average, someone dies every day of the year on our roads and another eight are injured. With this in mind, the government introduced the ambitious Road to Zero campaign, a goal of zero deaths per 100,000 people by 2030. However, even with this campaign, on average, our road crash fatalities have increased each year, with 380 last year, the same number as 2020. This may be because of Road to Zero's hands-off approach, whereby they state Humans make mistakes, drivers make mistakes, let's build an infrastructure around them. Acting as the ambulance at the bottom of a cliff in a sense. This is a valid strategy, however it leaves room for a complementary approach. One that fixes the driver behaviour at its core, that stops the crash from happening altogether. Kia ora koutou, I'm Jesse Robert Smith, and this year I created Nudge to Zero using audio interventions to improve driver behaviour. I looked at the top causes of crash that could be addressed with a solution like this and came down to the following four. Speeding, distraction due to mobile phone use, driver fatigue, and driving to weather conditions. Then I built a system which could identify those crashes using weather APIs, device location data, national speed limit databases, and more, and came down to being able to effectively calculate whether someone was doing this risk-inducing activity and give a following audio intervention. How were the audio interventions designed? Well, I did a lot of research and spoke to clinical psychologists who guided me in nudge-based intervention. All about nudging people towards better practice. So what does that look like in reality? Well, for speeding, we can see the first message would be heads up. The speed limit here is 50 kilometers now. A gentle nudge when it first detects you've gone over the speed limits. Following that, we give a period of grace where we let you respond effectively to that intervention. If you don't respond, it goes up a level. Intensity escalation, a principle of nudge-based intervention to the next message. Hey, if you keep driving at this speed, you'll only arrive 45 seconds earlier. Finally, if you kept speeding, we get to the final message. Warning, notice our tongue changes. At this speed, you're 1.5 times more likely to have a major crash. Please slow down. The combination of knowing, of knowing the limited benefit, 10 seconds, and the increased risk, 1.5 times, was really effective at helping to lower people's speed. And we created these really digestible messages for every type of road crash risk. Once the interventions had been designed and were perfectly designed as not to be distracting in the sense and to be as digestible and as effective as possible, we sent it out to a bunch of testers across the country, from Wellington to Christchurch to Nelson, we gathered over 500 kilometres of data. From this data, we saw massive positive results, whereby speeding, distraction, both decreased by 35%. And of the speeding that did occur, it wasn't nearly as severe. People were speeding for less time and at a lower level. More interestingly, massive behavioral trends were observed. Where with each following journey, drivers were becoming better and better at their practice. Look at here. On their first baseline journey with no audio interventions enabled, we had two infractions per kilometer. On their final journey, their fourth one, that went down to 0 0.2. The kicker is though, that your brand spanking new Tesla, your Range Rover, might already have this feature in it, where it will use inherently flawed cameras to look at the speed limit signs and then give you a beep or a warning or a flash on your dashboard. However, we're already a country of older cars and in the current economic condition, not many people are going to be buying your brand new Tesla. In that way, we combat the socio-economic health inequalities where currently poorer and in worse older cars people are dying much more often on the roads. Not on. 
and this helps reduce that inequality. The other side of the equation, though, is the data. Our best bet for getting data on roads is speed limit cameras, those little tubes which you sometimes roll over, and even manually filming. The side effect of logging all data anonymously, logging these infractions, we get unparalleled insight into where people are speeding, where people are getting distracted, and then possibly why, to help inform policy making, government decisions, etc. The possibilities are endless. Look at environment, environmental impact as well. More economic driving with less speeding, less distraction, less stops, less starts is much better for the environment as you lower the emissions. However, there are still some limitations. Sample size, 500 kilometers is a lot, but with that amount, we weren't able to gather enough data to look at weather intervention and distraction intervention, and sorry, drug fatigue intervention. So looking at a future step would be increasing the sample size to much more, 5,000 kilometers, 50,000, imagine what we could impart. Another one was the novelty factor. Now you might have noticed that on that first journey, we actually saw a spike in that behavioral trend. And that was because many drivers were interested and curious about what the interventions were and tried to trigger them. Now, that's hard to avoid, but even with that, the trend downward was still observed. Finally, we'd look at the next step of possibly using AI to create more curated messages. We've already got well-designed messages, but they're currently a one-size-fits-all approach. If we could use AI to look at individuals' driving behavior based on their speeds, their turning style, etc., anything, we could create more curated and effective messages to help people slow down more effectively. Thank you, and I hope together we can lower the road toll. Science Fair this year was a blast, and I highly recommend any of you thinking about doing it, definitely give it a crack. The judges are great, the atmosphere is amazing, and you can really explore what you are interested in. Thank you so much for the opportunity, Niwa, and thank you so much for listening. Cheers.